Hello, my name is Rob Reed. I'm with Roland. I've been invited by Varvid to introduce the brand new VR4 HD. So the VR4 HD is part of our VR lineup. And let's talk a little bit about that lineup. So to do that, I'm going to go to my presentation here. So the VR series lineup includes the VR3 EX, as well as the VR4 HD, which is in the middle of the lineup, and the VR50. The VR3 EX is our standard definition switcher, and the VR4 HD is an HD and the VR50 is our multi-format HD switcher. So the big difference or in our AV lineup here is it's all in one. So you've got an integrated audio mixer, integrated video mixer with USB out for web streaming or recording. So the VR3E, uh, the VR4 HD has the USB 3 out that you can do a full 1080p output uh, to go to Facebook Live or YouTube or something like a Ustream or a live stream. So let's talk a little bit about some of the key features of the VR4 HD. So some of those uh, include auto mixing. So auto mixing allows us to set weighting on the audio inputs to auto adjust or auto gain our audio levels, especially for doing a panel discussion. We also have echo cancel. So echo cancel allows us to take audio in through the USB port, let's say like a Skype call, and it eliminates the feedback from the audio that comes through the USB port. So it's a great way of um, bringing in someone to your presentation or live production via Skype without having feedback issues, which a lot of people run into. We also have uh, user buttons here at the top that are assignable, as well as we have a downstream keyer, and I'll demonstrate that in a little bit, but a downstream keyer allows me to bring in graphics or text from an external source like a computer or an iPad to key those graphics over top our live video feeds for doing titling and lower thirds, things like that. Um, we also have a USB audio loopback, as I mentioned, through Skype. And then we also have remote control software for Mac or Windows so that you can uh, control all the functionality of the VR4 HD from our free remote control software. And lastly, we have a tally uh, interface so you can connect that to your cameras and know what camera sources you're on when you're switching. Okay, so let's look at some of the features of the VR4 HD. Um, the back of it, um, as you can see, we have four HDMI inputs. The fourth input is our special input and it has full scaling capabilities. So I can take an analog standard definition resolution video source through composite video all the way up to a 1080p resolution through HDMI, including an RGB input. So you can bring in uh, graphics or texts or things like that from a computer, which is really important in the corporate world. Um, we also have uh, the output as well. So we have a multi-view output. So if I select this button, you can see the multi-view output on here. Um, and then also we have uh, uh, HDMI out, and we also have an RGB or VGA out, which can go into your projector or screens. So um, that's basically the I.O. on the video side. Um, we also have video composition effects, as I talked about. So we can do picture-in-picture, split-screen. We also have a downstream keyer. And then we can also view all of our quad, all four sources at the same time. And then our audio inputs are really, really key. A lot of people don't value audio like they should for their live productions. Um, we have the ability to plug in, um, as you can see in the uh, keynote presentation, four microphone inputs on the side. Those can be XLR or TRS and we have uh, effects built into that to sweeten the audio mix. Um, we also have uh, RCA jacks in the back that you can bring in audio in, as well as an eighth inch input so I can bring in stuff from an iPod, that type of thing, as an audio source. And then lastly, as we mentioned earlier in the presentation, you can bring in audio through the USB port. Um, and then we also have the ability to de-embed and mix and sweeten audio from the HDMI sources. And there are separate audio controls for that as well. So that makes up the 18 channel uh, audio mixer capabilities. So let's talk a little bit further about the auto mixing function. As we mentioned earlier in our presentation, the auto mixing function allows us to set weighting on the audio inputs or the physical inputs. And so what that allows us to do is when we have auto mixing on, it'll auto gain based on the weighting. So for example, you're doing a panel discussion, you may want the moderator to have a little bit more audio level than the, uh, the panelists. So um, I'll show you how you set up that weighting as well. Um, lastly, we have echo cancel. And so the echo cancel allows us again to bring in audio via Skype and it does like a mix minus so you don't get feedback 
from the audio coming from the USB port. So let's talk a little bit about the setup of the V4 HD, VR4 HD. So as you can see, this is the, uh, the top panel here and I can see what video source I'm switching to. So now I can switch to any video source just by tapping these buttons here. So input one, two, three, and four. I can also hit my input button and when I have my input on here, it brings up my quad view so I can see all four video sources. Just simply by tapping the quadrant of where that video source in, I can switch to that video source as well. So pretty, pretty handy uh, touch screen interface. So I'm gonna switch to the output here um, so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna go to my system setup button. This allows me to go in and adjust the parameters of everything we talked about earlier. So video input four, I tap on that. I have full scaling capabilities so I can scale up my video sources, et cetera, et cetera, on input four. That's where my computer's coming in. So if I wanted to scale up the horizontal size, I can switch to that video source. As you can see, I'm scaling that up um, past 100%. I can also adjust the horizontal position as well as the vertical position. So great for bringing in that fourth input that doesn't match the resolution of your other video sources. All right, so now let's talk about transitions. So say for example, I wanna mix between one video source and the other video source. Um, all I have to do is right now I'm on a mix. So if I tap the mix button, this is my dissolve timer, how much time is gonna to take to uh, cross dissolve between my two video sources. Now I can switch to another source or another source and you can see I'm doing cross dissolve. Um, I can do fam, nam, and I can also do a mosaic as well. And I'll show you the mosaic transition as well. So real simple. And then we also have the ability to adjust our white patterns too. So if I tap my white button, I can go in here and I can scroll through. You can see on the screen that I'm scrolling through to my different white patterns to choose from. So really, really cool. The ones that have kind of a gradient look to it, it's a soft edge wipe. And those are kind of more, I don't use wipes a lot, but if I do, I usually use the soft edge wipes. So this is what that looks like. I'm gonna switch between my video sources. Again, the transition time's at 0.9 seconds. As you can see, I can adjust the, the time down below here and typically I'm at a 0.6 or a 0.7 uh, transition time. So that's how you set up your uh, transitions. We can also do picture in picture. Right now our picture in picture is set up as a quarter window. You can also do a half size window as well by adjusting that. So I'm gonna go back to a quarter and all I have to do um, to do a picture in picture is tap the picture in picture window and then I need to select what video source that I wanna use as my picture in picture. Maybe I wanna use my computer source as one of my picture in picture windows. I can just tap that and now you can see that I can bring up my picture in picture window in the uh, the touch screen so it's really really easy to set up so now that I've turned that off my system set up and all my parameters I can now use the touch screen over here to position exactly where I want the picture in picture window so pretty cool so I go to my system setup again, the picture in picture window. Maybe I don't want to have any border at all. So I set that to zero. Now I don't have a red border. You can also adjust the, the color of the border as well. Green, blue, red, yellow, black. So, and you can ad adjust the position in here um, if you aren't using the touch screen interface to position the picture in picture window. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Let's look at um, split screen capabilities. All right, so I'm gonna take my picture-in-picture -picture key off and I'm gonna go into the picture-in-picture -picture window setup. So uh, actually I'm gonna go to my split screen, um, which is right here. And so right now it's a vertical center. So what that allows me to do is take a vertical split screen and it just has a centering position so it doesn't do any squeezing. It'll actually crop off some of that video sources. So all I have to do is now go into my split screen composition button and as you can see this starts blinking again I just need to choose that second uh, split screen uh, source and now I can go in right now it's at a 50% I can now adjust the positioning of the crop of where I'm cropping that uh, split screen capabilities I can also do uh, vertical um, I can do horizontal and I can also do squeeze so it'll actually squeeze the full uh, video resolution if I want so you can see you have a lot of capabilities for split screen capabilities. All right, so I'm gonna go back. And lastly, let's talk about keying. 
All right, so I'm going to scroll through here and then keying capabilities. So I'm going to take off my split screen and um, I'm going to bring up uh, a slide um, that I made on a green background. So I'm going to show that full screen here. I'm just going to do a straight cut. And notice how I created a lower third, just says a Roland VR4 HD on a white background. And I'm just doing a full screen res resolution from Keynote. You can also use PowerPoint and there's other third party graphic software that you can use. All right, so now all I have to do um, is go in here and set what, where's the source coming from for the key? So right now uh, it's coming from channel four. The key type is chroma, the color is green. So it looks like I have er pretty much everything set up that I need to do. Now all I have to do is hit the key button. And as you can see, uh, coming on the, the output, um, we actually have the lower third key. Now because it is a downstream key, I can switch the background video source and the key still remains. So it is a true uh, downstream key on the VR4 HD. So you can see it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to set up. Um, let's take a look at some of the other parameters of the key. Um, I can also do a blue uh, chroma key. Um, and I can also change the chroma value to be a luma value so I can key out a black background or a white background as well. So I'm going to take the, the key off there. So you can see you have a lot of keying capabilities. All right, now let's talk a little bit about um, the audio portion of it. And I think that's where the power of the VR4 HD comes in that separ separates it from a lot of the other switchers on the market. So um, we had talked about auto mixing earlier. So I'm going to uh, press the auto mix button. I'm going to take this off here and now I go into my audio setup and I can now set up under uh, auto mixing setup, hit edit. And now you can see this is my waiting right now on input one. Let's say maybe that's my moderator right now. It's set to 60. So let's set that to maybe 90 and then the, the other panelists, let's set that maybe to, you know, 80 or something like that. And what that allows me to do now is when I have auto mixing on and everybody's talking at the same time, it's going to auto gain adjust um, to the weighting that I set on every single one of the channels. And you can see that you can assign weighting to your external sources as well. What's cool about that is say if I have background music happening and no one's talking maybe before the presentation starts, I can set the weighting to be like maybe 20 or something like that. So when someone starts talking uh, with the moderator, it'll auto, auto adjust or auto gain down the background music so that I, get, I don't have to ride the fader if I'm mixing the, uh, the video at the same time. So auto mixing is really, really cool and easy to set up. So once I have that button set up, then, then, I can, uh, then, then everything auto adjusts based on the weighting. All right, so that's how you set up auto mixing. Let's talk a little bit about the, the effects um, on the input channels. So say for microphones, I have the ability to do gain, level, aux send, reverb send, and I also have EQ, a gate, and a compressor on every single one of these channels. So really, really awesome way of um, sweetening your audio mix, especially if you have microphone inputs. Um, on inputs five and six, you have basic uh, gain adjustments, aux send, basic EQing, as well as delay. So that's on five, six, and seven, and eight. And then if I go to my HDMI setup, here's my audio levels uh, de-embedding from HDMI, HDMI one, two, three, and four. So you can see as I'm tapping those buttons, pretty cool, it follows along. So I know exactly what uh, HDMI source that I'm on. So if I'm on four and I'm adjusting the, uh, the volume levels or I'm adjusting the EQ, I can now go in there and edit that as well. So pretty cool on the audio side of things. Again, it embeds the audio into the HDMI signal on the main output, as well as it embeds the audio into the USB port so I can send it out to my web stream or to my record. So overall, again, the VR4 HD is an integrated audio mixer and a video mixer with USB out for web streaming or recording. And it's available today and the street price is $27.95. And be sure to get it from varvid.com.